Okay, let me start with what liberalism is. Key thing to understand about liberalism is that it is based on two fundamental assumptions about human nature. The first one goes like this. Do you believe that human beings are fundamentally social animals who carve out room for their individuality? Or do you believe that we are fundamentally individuals to begin with who come together and form social contracts? Very, very important question. And where you stand on this issue is of enormous consequence. Liberalism is predicated on the assumption that we are individuals from the get-go and that we form social contracts. This is why people like Hobbes and Locke, who is effectively the father of liberalism, and Rousseau are known as social contract theorists. They all start with individuals in the state of nature who form social contracts. So that's the first point you want to keep in mind in liberalism, about liberalism. The focus is on the individual. Second is that liberalism assumes that human beings cannot use their critical faculties to discover universal truths. When it comes to first principles, when it comes to those big questions about what is the good life, what is the proper political system, we cannot reach universal agreement. I like to talk about abortion and affirmative action when I talk about this subject in the United States. Abortion and affirmative action are hot button issues. It's very hard to imagine that you could get a whole slew of people together, let them turn on their critical faculties, and they could reach agreement on these issues. I know really smart people, really smart people who favor abortion, and really smart people who are opposed to abortion. And what's very important to understand when it comes to liberalism and this critically important assumption is that sometimes people believe so fervently with regard to a particular issue, that they're willing to kill each other, right? It matters so much. And you want to remember that you can trace the origins of liberalism back to this country, and you can trace the origins back to a time when Protestants and Catholics were killing each other in huge numbers. There's no way you can use your critical faculties to determine whether Catholicism is a superior religion to Protestantism or vice versa. They're just real limits to what you can do with your critical faculties when it comes to dealing with first principles. And the potential for violence is always there. So the central question for liberalism is how should politics be arranged to deal with this potential for violence? This is what liberalism is all about, thinking about this central problem. This is the liberal solution. It has three parts to it. The first part is to argue about individual rights. The argument is that everybody has individual rights, a set of rights that they cannot be denied. And those rights are inalienable. That's why I use the word everybody. This is very important. I'll talk more about this in another minute. It's very important to understand that liberalism privileges rights and those are inalienable rights or natural rights. That means they apply to everybody on the planet. Okay? And the idea is that individuals, right, individuals have a right. They have the freedom to live life pretty much as they see fit. Because we individuals cannot agree on what is the right life or the good life, we can't agree on first principles, the name of the game is to carve out space in civil society for individuals to have as much freedom as possible to live life the way they see fit. That's what living in a liberal society is all about. It's why I'm very happy that I live in liberal America, right? Because we have lots of rights to do pretty much what we want. Second part of the story is we emphasize the norm of tolerance because we recognize in a liberal society that there are going to be differences and that some people are going to live in ways that are different than you and in ways that you don't approve of. But we tolerate difference. Again, what we're trying to do here 
is we're trying to prevent people from killing each other and at the same time allow them as much freedom as possible to live life the way they see fit. But the problem is that tolerance and an emphasis on rights only takes you so far because there's still going to be some people out there who want to kill those they disagree with and who are living according to principles that they don't agree with. That's why you need a state. There is a very important role for the state in a liberal society, but it's supposed to be a limited state because if you have a really powerful state, that state can trample on individual rights. And you don't want that. You want to give individuals the right to live the life as they see fit, okay? So those are the three solutions or the three elements of the liberal solution to the starting problem. Now, here's where the taproot of liberal hegemony comes in, right? And I'll say much more about this as we go along. It took me a long while to figure this out when I was thinking about liberalism. But a theory that's based on individualism and says that every individual on the planet has a certain set of rights quickly becomes a universalistic theory. It's very important to understand that. That's what turns, this is, as I go along, I'll tell this story in greater detail. This is what turns the United States into a crusader state. It's that heavy emphasis on rights, individual rights, inalienable rights, that leads to a universalistic ideology or foreign policy in this case. Okay, but no, don't want to get into that at the moment. Let's talk a little bit about nationalism. Nationalism's core assumption, very different than liberalism, starts with the assumption that humans are naturally social animals. We are born into and heavily socialized into particular groups. We're born into tribes. Before our critical faculties kick in, we are socialized by our mother and father and by others around us. And individualism takes a back seat to group loyalty. This is not to say that you have no room for individualism in, uh, in any society. You can carve out lots of space for individualism, but you do it in the context of group loyalty. We are all social animals. That's what nationalism assumes. Aside from the family, the most important group the most important social group in today's world is the nation. And I'll say more about this in a second. But before I do that, what exactly is nationalism? Nationalism is a set of political beliefs which hold that a nation, a body of individuals with characteristics that purportedly distinguish them from other groups, should have their own state. A nation state. The, the, the concept of a nation state captures what nationalism is all about. So nationalism is predicated on the assumption that we're all born into social groups, and the most important social group outside the family in the world we live in is the nation. And each one of those nations wants its own state. To drive this point home, think of Zionism and think of Theodore Herzl. Theodore Herzl was the father of Zionism. His most famous book is called The Jewish State. Just think of those words, The Jewish State. He's effectively saying there is this group, there is this nation, there is this tribe called Jews, and they want their own state, Jewish state. Think about the Palestinians. What do the Palestinians want? The Palestinians want a state of their own. People talk about the two-state solution, Palestinians and Jews. Right. Go to Catalonia. What do the Catalonians want? The Catalonians want a state of their own, a nation state. That's what nationalism is. Take this a step further. Very important to understand, especially for my story, that nations 
place enormous importance on sovereignty or self-determination, which is why they want their own state. Palestinians want their own state because they want to determine their own future. They want to determine what their politics look like. They want to have a control over their own daily life. Sovereignty, self-determination, these, these, these are concepts that matter very greatly in a world of nation states. And of course, this brings us to nation states. It's not just nations. Nation states place enormous importance on sovereignty or self-determination, which inclines them in powerful ways to resist foreign interference. Think of the United States today and think of all this talk in the United States about the Russians interfering in American elections. This is categorically unacceptable to the vast number of Americans. Why is that the case? It's because the Russians are violating our sovereignty. They're interfering in the politics of America. And it's quite clear that most Europeans feel the same way about the Russians interfering in their politics. And that, of course, is because Europe is filled with nation states, and those nation states care about their sovereignty, and they don't want other countries interfering in their politics. It's all about nationalism. Now, my argument is, as you heard me say early on, nationalism beats liberalism at every turn. Why is that the case? It's because we're primarily social animals. We're not individuals from the get-go who form social contracts. We're social animals. We're born into groups. We're born into nations. We're born into tribes from the beginning. We're heavily socialized from the beginning. We have deep loyalties in almost every case. And on the empirical side, just look at the planet today. Have you ever thought about what the planet looks like today compared to what it looked like in, let's say, 1450? If I gave you a map of Europe in 1450 and I told you to memorize it in one week, it's not clear you could do it. It would be such a complicated map. There's principalities, there's douches, there's city-states, there's empires. There's just all sorts of different kinds of political entities on that map of Europe in the 15th century. Today, the entire planet is covered with nation states. Remarkable homogeneity. Of course, each one of those nation states is different because nations are different from each other, different cultures. But the planet is covered with nation states. Furthermore, just to compare it to liberal democracies, we have never even had 50% of the states on the globe being liberal democracies. And since 2006, the number of liberal democracies on the planet is decreasing. At the same time, every state is a nation state, nationalism. Finally, very important to remember, all liberal democracies, this includes countries like the United States and Britain, are liberal nation states. The United States is a very nationalistic country. Britain is a very nationalistic country. Witness Brexit. Okay, nationalism, very powerful force here and in the United States, even though what we talk about most of the time is these countries as liberal countries. I often say to people, if you went to the main research library at the University of Chicago, you would find that half the library is filled with books on American liberalism, yet you can't even find one full shelf of books on nationalism. 